Okay, we are going to talk about thermodynamics, photosynthesis, and cell respiration. So let's begin with the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law um, pretty simply states that energy can't be created or destroyed. It can't do that. Um, but it can be transformed from one form to another. So it can be changed, for example, from light energy to chemical energy to heat energy. And throughout all that process, taking these different forms from um, light being emitted to chemicals to something that is in matter to heat the being emitted, the amount of energy is the same, though the availability of it to living things in an ecosystem might be different. And then that gets us to our second law, which states that with each transformation, you don't lose energy, but it becomes less ordered. And therefore, it is less usable to an ecosystem or the living things in the ecosystem. And heat is the least ordered or most chaotic form of that energy. And so as the order um, decreases, so if we think about it this way, as, as order goes down, a concept called entropy goes up. Entropy is a measure of the chaos. And with the, these transformations, if we go from light to chemical to heat, we are changing back and forth between matter and energy. And matter and energy are both constant in the amounts, but they are, and the, but they are interrelated to each other. So let's let's take a molecule that we should be familiar with, glucose. And then it has hydrogens and oxygens, oops, not there, coming off of all the carbons. And I'm not going to draw those in. And the, the glucose molecule is matter. It has mass. It has substance. So the question is, where's the energy? So the matter is contained in the atoms. The carbon atom has mass. It is matter. The energy is contained in the bonds. So the matter is a thing. The energy isn't a thing. The energy is, in a sense, the relationship between the carbon atoms, as they are bonded together by sharing electrons, then that took energy to move electrons closer to one carbon or closer to the other carbon, or to share them. That required energy to put them together. So energy was required to go into the system to bond all this together to make the glucose. Therefore, that energy that it took to, to put it together is stored effectively in the bonds. And, there, and then when you break it apart, then that releases the energy back out, often in the form of heat. 
and you can capture that energy. So let's think about it this way. Let's start with our sun. And our sun is producing energy in the form of light. So that's one form of energy. And then that energy is being transformed into chemical energy called glucose by plants. And to do that, the plants needed the light energy, but they also needed water, and they also needed CO2. So we have the carbon and the oxygen, and the hydrogen and the oxygen all get put together to make that C6H12O6 molecule of glucose. Then that is transformed into another kind of chemical energy in cell respiration. And in cell respiration, the, the bonds between the glucose molecules are broken down and heat is released, CO2 is released, water is released, and the end result is work. And that work in the cell required being put into another chemical ATP and then that work can make your muscles move or make your cells do things. Think about this a little more simply. The glucose gets put into the plant, into the tissue of a plant, and instead of cell respiration, let's say we burn it. And we burn it and we produce a flame on our log. And what comes off of that but heat and light. So our energy started in the sun, came out as light, was transformed into chemical energy. That chemical energy was transformed into another kind of chemical energy in the cells. And that resulted in work, the muscles doing work. Or we can intercept that and think about if we had a, a tree, we burn that, or coal as a fossil fuel. When you break all the bonds between all those carbons and all those oxygens, every time you break those bonds, you are getting heat and a flame or light from it. And that's what we see in a fire when we burn something like coal. So whether we're, we're burning it like coal or we're burning it in our cells to move our muscles, we have taken that energy from light to chemical and ultimately to heat as you give off heat as well. And so what we're seeing is that within the ecosystem, photosynthesis and the cell respiration follow both the first and the second law of thermodynamics. We don't create or destroy the energy, we transform it. But in transforming it, ultimately, the end result is it gets to its most chaotic state or highest level of entropy, which is the end result is heat, which goes ultimately back into the atmosphere and then off the planet and into the universe. And so the amount of energy in the universe stays the same whether it's um, on the planet or off the planet. So if you want to think of it this way, another system here, we have sun, we have our, our blue ball that we live on, put a little green on there too, and maybe a little white for clouds. The energy comes to the earth, cycles through the life on the planet. The life uses that energy to make order, to make more life. And then in the end, the energy leaves as heat. 
So the energy comes through and and is a uh, one-way system through it. Whereas, so that's our energy. Whereas the matter is always on the planet. The matter never leaves the planet. It's only the heat that leaves the planet and the energy that comes in to the planet. But the amount of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur that make up our bodies, that has been on the planet for 4.6 billion years and will not leave the planet. So the energy cycles, the matter recycles.